Well, 2020 is drawing to an end, so we're about to welcome 2021. So I will probably will throw in two videos for you guys to close out the year. But the first one is, in fact, four events from three different Japanese promotions. And they were all awesome. But we're going to review and discuss all of them on this episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Hey everyone, welcome to Deleted Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling from AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, the many promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, J Rod here. Now, as you all know, recently I have been watching a lot of the Japanese promotions with their upcoming events. Recently, I did All Japan Pro Wrestling, Pro Wrestling Noah, and Stardom. And recently, I also did DDT Pro Wrestling and Tokyo Yoshi Pro. But today, I only got four events with three different promotions. Uh, Tokyo Yoshi Pro, two events with um, DDT, and of course, the last Dragon Gate event of the year before the start of 2021. So let's review all of them right now. Now, the first um, show that I saw was from Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling. If you guys are familiarized with that, that's the all-female uh, wrestling promotion out of Japan that is affiliated with DDT, but they're like their own separate entity. And if you must know, uh, there are some wrestlers we've seen that have uh, been on AEW and others that might, that you may have not have heard of. But let's go from start to finish. First match of the night is Moika... Moka Miyamoto versus Marika Koba, Kobashi. So it was an interesting match. I have seen Marika Kobashi before. She was in that previous uh, DDT uh, six-woman tag team match in the middle of the streets of of Tokyo somewhere. But it was okay match. It wasn't like one of the best ones. But it was a good match. Not going to lie. Um, like I said, I'm not familiarized with a lot of these wrestlers. But it was good. But Marika Koba uh, Kobashi actually won this one with a good victory. The next match is a, a tag team match be uh, with Haruma Neko and Nayo Ka Kakuda versus Sina Shiori and Hikari Noah. Now, I'm not, like I said, I'm not familiarized with a lot of these wrestlers. Um,. It was an okay tag team uh, match. I think it was okay. But however, I'll give you guys the result. Who won this one? It's um, Shiori, uh, Shiori and Noah. They actually won this match. So like I said, not familiarized, but it was, good. it was a good match. The next one is a very interesting one. This one, I have to say, was a much better tag team match. We have um, Suzumi. And Raku versus um, Hyper uh, Mieso and Shoko Nakajima. Now, Shoko Nakajima, I have seen her before. She teamed up with B Priestley last year in uh, Fight for the Fallen um, when they were facing Britt Baker and Rio. However, there was a bit of a comedy in this whole thing. For some odd reason in this match, Hyper decided that she was falling asleep. Now, I don't know what uh, Susumi was thinking. She thought, if you guys ever seen clips of Orange Cassidy, there was a moment where he was falling asleep and the gentleman tried to do the pin. It's almost a similar way, but it was taking too long. I don't know if that was the case. But however, uh, Susumi was about to make the pinfall, but out of nowhere, um, Nak Nakajima was able to divert it and i don't think 
Piper knew what was going on, so she was clueless. But it was a good, it was a good match. It, it was one of the best, better matches for of tag team for this one. So I have to say it was a good. But of course, it ended with um, Nakajima picking up the victory for her team. It was really interesting. So as you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not familiarized with a lot of these girls, but it was a good match. The next one is another tag team match. We have Mirari Miyamu and Mia Wanatabe. Versus Pom Haraku, uh, Harajuko and Mizuki. Now I have seen um, the second team before in, in a previous um, uh, event with them. Which was for Well Merry Christmas. But I have to say this one had much of a bit, uh, different edge than the previous ones. Uh, the one that I just mentioned with uh, Nakajima and Hyper was one of the best ones. But this one has... Is the second best of the night. It was really good, as I expected. Like I said, like like my friend Nico said, these girls hit really hard, and that's I did not notice that. But I did like it. So the winners is he, uh, Mayumi and um, Wanatabe. They actually won this match thanks to um, Mayamami, the first team actually. Uh, let's just say that. So they won this one with a really good pinfall. The next match is a two out of three fall uh, match with a, two, uh, f a ten a uh, woman tag team match. First team, we have Maki Itoi, Mahito Kyuri, Yuka Kamafuku, and Rika Tam uh, Tatsumi. Second team, we have. Mia uh, Miyu uh, Miyashida, Yuki Anoi, Nodoka Temna, and Yuka Sakasaki. Yes, the magical girl is in this match. Now, if you guys are AEW fans, you know who Yuka Sakasaki really is. You know, she's the magical girl. You probably assume that she would win this match. Me, I thought the same thing. But however, it kind of showed. Uh, I have seen... Maki Ito, who was in the match against Miyu in the previous, where it ended in a time limit draw, and Maki was not too happy or subtle that it ended in a time limit draw. But however, the first pinfall was conducted by the second team, led by Miyu. Uh, Miyu. But the second pinfall was uh, picked up by Maki's team. But this is where the crucial part happens. Who picks up the victory on this one? So... The answer to that was, of course, Maki's t a team. She picked up the victory on this one herself. Now, however, post-match, they decided to continue a little bit with the story. Rika T uh, Tatsumi appears that she wants a piece of Yuka's title, like challenger. Yuka, who is always up for a challenge, doesn't back down from anything. So, But as you know, there is no subtitle, no... Uh, English commentary, not nothing like we've seen with uh, New Japan and Dragon Gate, but you can tell from the way they talk if you pay attention closely. But however, they ended the the event with a curtain call where they call all the girls from the back to come out to close out the year. I thought it was a great moment to end it in that way. So it was a lot of fun. I did enjoy it, and hopefully, I get to see more of this promotion down the line. So let's move on with DDT Pro Wrestling. Okay, so if you guys are not familiarized with DDT Pro Wrestling, then let me explain it. DDT Pro Wrestling is a bit of a comedy show, but there have been different shows that are completely different from each other. Like, for example, there's the regular one we've seen. Then there's um, this one called Ganbare. I hope I pronounced it right. Then once it was um, Tokyo uh, Pro Wrestling Bazaar, which was originally a hardcore type of promotion, but now that they're no longer affiliated with them, they're on their own. And then there's Tokyo Pro Yoshi. But however, I like I said, there's two events from DDT that I will be reviewing. The first one right now I'm going to review is Ganbari. This one was at um, took place on the 26th in. Um, 
in Green Hall in Tokyo, which is the same hall that Tokyo Pro uh, Tokyo Yoshi Pro Wrestling did. They use the same place. It's a very small location, kind of like um, the size when you do something in a convention center or something. Now, the first match, like I, I probably warn you guys, not a lot of these wrestlers I'm familiarized with. But, however, it, it, there are some good matches in this one. First match, it started with um, Shin Ichido uh, to, Tominaga versus uh, Yumedo uh, Manari. Uh, this one was a, a, a good match. Uh, basically, a bit of a hard-hitting. Now, like I said, I'm not familiarized with a lot of these wrestlers, but they're very impressive if you guys haven't seen them yet. So, it ended with uh, Yumedo Imanura, uh, Imanari to pick up the victory. It was really good. I, I practically enjoyed it. The next match, surprise, if this is if you guys are wondering, if you guys are familiarized with the Japanese wrestling style. They normally don't have co-ed matches, but with DDT Pro Wrestling, they're amongst of the f uh, small number of promotions that have wrestlers that are facing uh, that have women in their promotion so this next one is from uh was between rena amikara uh yuna manase versus arukaze and moka aruchi now again i'm not familiarized with these girls so i will tell you the winner anyway since you know so the winners was rena Amiyak amikura and Yuna uh, Manase. Next match is another tag team match. This one was a very interesting one. This one is from Koda Umeda. Um, Koiki Awasaki versus Kengo Nakamura and Shushiro Katsumura. The match was pretty a really good, interesting tag team. I did like this one as, as much because it did play it out. But however, um, like I said, the first the, when I witnessed the first team seems like they had the better edge because um, Keigo and uh, Sushiro are doesn't seem like they are much of a clicking team. But the way the story was played out is great. But however, it was Umeda and Awasaki who picked up the victory. But in post match, uh, Katsumura was not so happy so he looks like he was about to start a fight but however it was being told he was told to leave and umina laid a little promo but i don't know what they were saying like i said in ddt there is no um how do i say no one to translate because i don't know if they do that once before we started going to the pandemic but we'll see what that that happens the next match is another tag team we have Okay, Suke Ishii and someone who I'm familiarized with, uh, Shin uh, Shigehiro Are. Now, Shigehiro Are, I am familiarized with him uh, in two different ways. One, he appeared on Sammy Guevara's vlog when Sammy did his second tour in with DDT Pro Wrestling back then. Now, Shigehiro Are is one of the most popular wrestlers in DDT, but he fled. He left because he was there was a falling out. He traveled the world mostly from Mexico. He did a lot of independent shows. Um, if you must know, he's also a member of the Stronghearts, Shima's group. So it was a pretty good one to watch. Uh, they were facing off against um, Akudo, uh, Aku, Akudo Hikara and Ken o uh, Oka. Now, this is uh, I think this was the best tag team match of the night for me. From witnessing, but however, I kind of suspected how I was going to win it. It was, of course, Ishii and Are who actually won the match. But however, um, Ishii decided throwing a little promo, and I think he was having a direct message to Ika uh, Idaka, who was in fact his opponent. So whatever the, they were saying is probably leading to a story with them. Now, let's get to the main event. This one is an intergender match for a championship called the Independent Junior Heavyweight title uh, between uh, the current uh, KOD six-man tag team champion, Shota, one-third of them, facing off against a champion, 
Um, don't be surprised when I mention the opponent's name. It's not her. Her name is Asuka. Not the Asuka from AEW. I mean, from WWE. Back then, when she was still living in Japan, she was known as Kana. Keep that in mind if you guys don't know what I'm talking about. But yeah, it was a very hard-hitting match. Now, you probably say, wait a minute, this is an intergender match. Isn't that different? Well, like I said, many of the promotions, there's a rare breed of promotions that allow intergender matches to happen. Not a lot of them are around, but they're very rare. But surprise, surprise, I it ended with Shota winning the title, and he actually becomes double champion. It was a big surprise for him, but however, it appears another female wrestler comes out and tries to... I don't know who this person is. They, I, they didn't say who it was, or I tried to figure out who it was. She kind of asked for to be the next challenger for this title. And of course, Shota gladly accepted. So, I hope you guys like this one. So, let's go to the other DDT Pro Wrestling event. Uh, this one is called the D-King Grand Prix. Okay, so this is DDT's D-King uh, Grand Prix final. So, they had like, they're sort of a tournament. Now, this one, I was trying to understand what this one was about. Now, before I started seeing uh, the previous, the first time I saw DDT with the final ba uh, Christmas final battle, my friend, a friend of mine, told me he heard about uh, veteran wrestler Jun Akiyama. I think that's his name. Akiyama, that's his name. Jun Akiyama was in this, and okay, makes sense. And then when I saw the card, I'm like, oh, so this is the one he was talking about. So I was curious to see how this one is, and I was really impressed with a lot of things on this one. So let's start with the first match. It's Toy Kojima versus Hideki o Okatani. I think that's his name. Really good match. Very hard hitting. Uh, again, I'm not familiarized with a lot of these wrestlers. Only if I've seen them maybe once, I can familiarize myself with them. But the match ended with um, Okatina, Okatina winning the match. It was really good. It was really good from what I have been seeing so far. The next match is a, a bit of a comedy, but a three-way match with a uh, Damnation member, Nobu uh, Ri uh, Nobuhiro uh, Shimatani versus Antonio Onda, who I'm familiarized with. And Toto Owashi. Now, Antonio Honda, he's like their version of Santino Morella. I've seen him before. Seen him wrestle. He even last year wrestled with Kenny against Kenny Omega in a mixed tag team match. He teamed up with Miro Yamashita while Kenny teamed up with Rio. Good match. But I did not know the moment when I saw Antonio Honda. I'm like, when did he got his head shaved? And I'm thinking maybe he must have been in one of those. How do I say? Um, matches where loser must shave off his head. But at certain points of the match, Han Honda actually... Antonio Honda was doing a bit of a comedy routine. But luckily, it, that always helps him to win the matches. I've always noticed that, and it was, it was pretty good. I did enjoy it. Now, the next match is a um, tag team match. We have Super Sasa Dango Machine. And Yukio Naya versus Danshuko Dino and Shanshiro Tagagi. Now, this was a very another comedic uh, movie. Their match, basically, he, much of the match you see a Dino pulling his freaking shorts down and getting his getting uh, people's faces slammed into it. I'm like, ah, it's crazy, but. That's how he's been. Adino uh, was in a match in in Christmas Final Battle in the street with two others, but he lost that match. While Shanshiro Tagagi was helping out a fellow veteran in a current explosion death match. But it did end it exactly like like it sh it did. Um, Dino and Tagagi won this particular match. 
Surprise, surprise. Now, the next one is a six-man intergender uh, tag team match. Basically, here's the first team. Don't know these guys. Uh, Mizuko Watase, Tomitsu uh, Naka, uh, Natsunaga, and Makoto Oshi versus Eruption, who I previously seen in the uh, Christmas Final Battle. Uh, Saki Akia, Yukio uh, Sakaguchi, and Kazusada ha um, Haguchi. Now, I did see Eruption before in a previous uh, match, but this time you take a bit of the comedy routine out of them, but it worked. Um, you probably say, wait a minute, this is a match with one team, we have all three guys, and in the match we have one team with two guys and a, and a woman. Well, it works. That's how it is with them. But I have to say I was really impressed how this one is because you don't see these type of matches here in the States that often, unless if you're in Mexico or in certain parts of the independent scenes in the U.S. But as I suspected, it was Eruption who picked up the victory, all thanks to Yukio, as always. But however, uh, well, the next match, we have a, I think it's an eight-man? Yeah, it's an eight-man tag team match. We have Keigo Nakamura, Shinmu Akio, Chris Brooks, and Harashima versus Damnation, consistent of Matt Pauly, Soma Tokata, and newcomer Yuji Himno and Tetsuke and, uh, Tetsuya Endo. Now, you have witness, um, I have witness, um, what's their name? Damnation in Christmas Final Battle in that little pool little party they had. But this one you see a little bit. There was a match, a moment where, um, Shimu was throwing his little hard kicks on into Yuji. It was so impressive. It's like a bit of the strong style stuff that you've seen in New Japan, but it was good. But however, um, uh, them recruiting Yuji Himo has always been has been a true gem for them because he is a powerhouse. Nothing has stopped them. But the promo ended with leader Daisuke promo impressed that they brought in a brand new acquisition to join them. I think that's something that Daisuke was really, really, really happy about. So, but however, Yuji gave his little statement. I don't know what he said in Japanese, but I'm assuming that. This is just the beginning for them. Now let's get to the semi-final match. We have, this is for the KOD6 uh, six, um, six man tag team match between Moa, Shima, Katsumara, and Yuki Inio versus the champions consistent of Kazuka, Kazuki, Hirata, Akito, and of course newly crowned champion from the previous one. Shota, uh, this one was a really amazing six-man tag team match. I enjoyed it a lot because it did show that they can do more things in this one from what I witnessed. But however, much of the match, it did seem like the, for the challengers were about to win it. But somehow, the champions were able to retain their titles. Now, however, one of the challengers has another title that... Looks like that one of the members of the champion of the champions of the six man tag titles. It seems like he's interested to obtain. From what I can tell from their expression, even though I don't understand what they're saying in Japanese, but it seems like it's pretty good. But however, once the challengers left, uh, Tagagi and Dino and some other dude I don't know who seems like they are willing to volunteer to become the next challengers and i'm sure the champions are welcome to the challenge i think that's what attack the, these titles are all about is uh, chal uh being challenged by the bet uh, by anybody who gets in their way or wants to prove that they earn those titles more than anything so i have noticed that a lot now let's get to the main event which is the d king grand prix finals we have uh konosuke Takeshita versus Jun Akima, uh, Akiyama, who, if you guys are not familiarized with Jun Akiyama, he is a veteran wrestler. He's been with um, 
Pro Wrestling Noah and All Japan. But he's currently on loan with DDT. So basically, he, uh, it was a very hard-hitting match. Very old-school type with Jun being the dominant one. And then you see Konosuke, who appears like he's going back and forth. But the match ended in the way where it, the veteran picks up the victory. That's always been something like people say, well, what about the newcomers? Well, I don't know how that works in Japan, but... Jun Akiyama actually won this match. Now, I don't know what's next for him. They didn't do no curtain call or anything because, uh, I don't know, uh, th that was a little different thing they ignore people do in Japan. But it was a good one. I did enjoy this uh, event, the Grand uh, the King Grand Prix. Hope there will be more of DDT. I love watching them, and hopefully I get to review this for all of you guys if you guys are interested in watching or getting to understand more of the Japanese wrestling scene. So, I think that's it for now. I review both. But let's do one more. So, we got Dragon Gate, the last Fantastic Gate event. Okay. Let's talk about Dragon Gate, Fantastic Gate. You're probably saying, wait a minute. Didn't I review this one before in the previous episode? Yes. It turns out there is multiple Fantastic Gate events in different locations and different timings. This is the last official one of 2020 from them until we start 2021. So let's talk with start with the first match. We have Team Boku, my favorite uh, stable faction, consistent of put, uh, Punch, Tominaga, Ryo Sato, and of course, Boku Timo Dragon facing off against R.E.D., Kazuma Sakamoto, Hiyo, and Kai. Now, as you know, there have been some frictions between these two teams in the past. But, however, you cannot deny Bogotimo's, you know, being the the top guy in dragging in, in Team Boku. As you know, the history, uh, Bakutimo behind the mask is uh, Shishima, Shishimu who was once a member of R.E.D. and he was kicked out because he messed up in final get in a uh, in dangerous gate which is a five team there will be a fight like a team where it'll be inside of a ring to win whoever loses they must either kick them out and that's person was Shishibo. but however Dragon Gate Generation didn't want nothing to do with them but of course it was Toramon who took pity of them but it was Doi and Sato who actually one of the form a team outside of the respected faction, Toramon, and they formed Team Boku, and they even invited Punch to join them. And that was pretty much how it was. But however, you cannot deny uh, Boku Timo, he's now becoming well-known, even though he got the blessing from Ultimo Dragon to continue to do this parody. And that's what he was doing. So, however, the match ended once again in Bokutimo's favor when he applied that little move, that, that Casadora move, whatever he calls it. But, yeah. Next match is a tag team match. We have um, the uh, student of Class of 2020, Takatirio Kamiya, who is one of the four who hasn't been, one of the two, who had, uh, one of three who haven't been turned to join R.E.D., Teaming with the Dragon Gate of Peter Pan himself, Dragon Kid, facing off against his former teammates, uh, Suji Kondo and Suzumu Yak Yokosuka. Now, as you know, Kid, um, Kondo, and Yokosuka were part of the Toramon faction, but it appears since they lost in that elimination match they did with R.D., it was a very good match to see, even though when Dragon Kid has the young, the new wrestler in the mix. But however, you cannot deny the experience that of Kondo and Yokosuka have. And I have to say, it was a pretty good match on this one. But however, when it ended with Kondo and Yokosuka winning the match, Dragon Kid seems like he has an attitude problem. Now, I have heard stories with Dragon Kid, even in story-wise, that... Oh, he has a bad attitude, even though Maximum had to tolerate with his behavior. That sort of thing. 
Now we get into a 10-man battle royale. Now here's the people who participated. We have Genki Uri, uh, Ori Gucci, Kaito Shida, Dai Inferno, Taka, uh, Takashi Yoshida, Kagetora, Yoshi Kanda, uh, Sha Shikoko Boy, um, Konomama Ichikawa, Kness, Mondai Ru, and Don Fuji. The match was pretty much exactly how you expect it was some great moments, but however, there are majority of the fact are only three members of R.E.D. and facing off against former members of Torimon uh, Generation. But however, my biggest surprise is how this one ended. I did not expect who was going to win it. It was Konomama Ichikawa. The reason I think th that I say this is because when I watch him, he's a bit of the weird wrestler when you look at him. Like, who the hell is this guy? But however, it appears that the other mem old former members of Toramont were in Ichikawa's side. Like, they wanted him to win, and that's exactly but Mondoru got in the way. He pissed off Don Fuji. But it kind of went exactly like that. And it threw a bit of the comedy routine right in the post-match with Ichikawa after he won. Now, the next match we have is a six-man tag team match. We have Super Shiza, uh, Masahaki uh, Mochizuku, and Ultimo Dragon versus R.E.D. Diamante, BB Hulk, and Eita. Now... It appears since now the Torimon generation has been dismantled, it appears Eita still has his issues towards Ultimo Dragon. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm referring to, let's go back to last year. M uh, Masada Yoshino called out Dra uh, Ultimo Dragon because they needed him to reshape the company after um, Shima left uh, Dragon Gate to go to China. But Eita took a problem to this with his appearance trying to control they even try to take him out which was not easy so basically red did exactly what they wanted is to get rid of Tarmon generation but the one thing that stands in their way is none other than ultimo dragon but of course red with their cheating ways they decided to do that much of this match now you can say that ultimo dragon should have won but you got to remember red is the only villainous faction that continues to do a lot of those things they were able to win the match but however are they going to continue with the idea where Ata needs to wants to get rid of ultimo dragon once and for all where he wants him gone well i don't know but we'll see what that happens in 2021 now um the next match this was a very interesting one we have Noriko Doi and Masato Shino, former members of Torimon, facing off are these newer members, SB Kento and Hip Hop Kikutura. Now, these two individuals, Kento and Kikutura, they were actually were part of the class of 2020 until they were highly recruited by Eita to join them. They are their goal is believing now that the past is the past is dead. But however, you look at Doi and Yoshino, they're mostly the team that redefined what Dragon Gate were all about back in the day. And now, Kento and Kigatuda wants to be the guys that will take over their spot. But however, they wanted Machino out, and that's what they try to do. Now, the match was good, but however, it ended in disqualification thanks to the other members of R.E.D. They even try to take out uh, Nuriko Doi until... Um, Dragon Kid showed up. It appears he still has unfinished business with SB Kento. If you guys don't know where I'm referring to, this took place in the in Final Gate, where SB Kento should have lost the match, but however, he cheated his way through to ensure that he lost, that he won, because the last member of Torimon to hold his ground was Dragon Kid. So it looks like we're may seeing a feud between Kid and Kento. But even though uh, Noriko Doi is fine, it appears that now it um, Dragon Kid wants to renew his feud with SB Kento. This is going to be an interesting matchup to see. 
Now, the main event, it's a 10-man uh, ten ten tag team match with two different factions. We have Mas the newly formed, newly, um, well, the newly stable faction, Masquerade, consistent of Jason Lee, Dragon Die, Kota Minora, and La Estrella, and leader and the current Open the Dream Gate champion, Shun Skywalker, facing off against Dragon Gate generation, uh, Yusuke Santa Maria, um, Kasuka Okuda, Yamato, and UT and KZ. Now, this match played a good, important role at the end. Like, you assume that Dragon Gate was able to pick up the victory, but however, it was the newly formed Masquerade that proved that they're here to stay. Now, Shun Skywalker, ever since he returned to Dragon Gate, he led a very powerful message to saying that he's here to stay. He's always felt that he was falling behind from everyone, even though there are those who didn't believe in him. But now that he formed his own faction, he's now taking Dragon Gate by storm. But however, it did not go well for Dragon Gate Generation when they came up short, losing the match to Masquerade. In post-match, I did not expect this to happen. After the events of what happened in the final gate, with Tormund disbanded, Apparently, Dragon Gate Generation made the decision that it was time for them to disband. Now, it seemed like a sad moment. So, if you must know, prior before Toramon and Dragon Gate Generation were formed, R.E.D. had their issues to fact with Ultimo Dragon showing up. Many of Dragon Gate's wrestlers were once students of Ultimo Dragon, so they sided with... Uh, with Dra uh, with Ultimate Dragon, but they all had different respective factions until they decided to break off in three different factions. There was R.E.D., which is the main villain, then Tormon Generation, and then, of course, there's Dragon Gate. Now, though the Dragon Gate Generation played a part where they're like the, the stars who came after Tormon, and that's what they were all about. They have no quarrel with Ultimate Dragon, but they have a quarrel with those wrestlers who sided with them. So, and that's what happened. And recently, we've been seeing uh, factions that are being formed away from the generational war, like Masquerade and Team Boku. But frankly, the decision was made that, okay, it's done. Now, as soon as you see Yam uh, Yamato, Okuda, Santa Maria, and of course, UT leaving, uh, KZ was left on in the ring mat, like sad and depressed. But however, he received a surprise visit from his former faction mates who were part of Tormon. We're talking about Genki Orichima and Suzumu Yokosuka. Now, if you guys don't know what I'm referring to, these guys were part of a faction called Natural Vibes. And all three of these guys were once um, Open the Triangle Gate Champions. Now, again, there was no... Uh, translation on this particular match but from the way I was seeing and was watching it appears that maybe now the KZ Suzumu and Genki were in fact want to reform their old faction natural vibes so it appears that now the generational war is over so we might be going back to the factions that we once saw back in the day but you ask yourself this obvious question, wait a minute, so that mean the other members of other teams are reforming? I don't know, because here's the way I see it. Yamoto, uh, Maria, and of course UT were once part of a faction called Tribal Vanguard. Uh, the reason that uh, their faction uh, fell apart is because two of their former members uh, defected to R.E.D., and that is B.B. Hulk and Kai. Now, B.B. Hulk defected to R.E.D. because he felt that he should have been the leader of the faction. And Kai, who decided to stay around with with Tribal Vanguard and then join um, Dragon, Gate, uh, Dragon Gate Generation, he defected too. And then there's um, Maximum. The last members were Noriko Doi, Masato Yoshino, Dragon Kid, Jason Lee, and... Uh, Kaito Shida. Now Shida, he is now a member with um, with R.D. He only reason he joined was because he felt that he was being forced to do something he did not want. 
Uh, majority of these guys wanted revenge for what happened to Ultimo Dragon and Con and Kanda, but uh, Ishida did not felt like it was the right thing for him, so he defected, and there, and that's the reason it happened. Now I don't believe Maximum could be reforming because a, um, what's his name, Noriko Doi is part of Team Boku, and Masato Yoshina is in fact is set to retire soon on the. Uh, Starting in all the way to August 20, uh, 2021. So I'm not sure exactly if there will be some older factions. I hope that Tribal Vanguard does return because they seem like they're still around. But Maximum, no, I don't think that's going to happen. But I do predict we may see new uh, new factions coming around from different people. Not sure when that happened or we'll see all, the, all these wrestlers remain independent. Only time will tell until we start 2021. So I hope you guys enjoy me reviewing all these uh, Japanese wrestling shows. Uh, I know they're not. Some of you are very curious if you like them, but if you do, then you should check it out. Now, if you probably ask me, where can we uh, watch these? Like, is it a free service, streaming service? Well, a friend of mine from. A previous wrestling show gate send me a link i can watch all the wrestling shows not only with wwe new japan impact and all that uh you must look either in the indie section or the archive section that's where they have some of these wrestling matches so i, th I hope you guys have a good time so i will send another video where i'll be not doing like a review of the ones that i warp or more talk about what my thoughts of these matches but if there are some ratings i will put them out because i'll just let it all out anyway so i must bid all of you adieu so goodbye Mwah. and have a nice day bang